Yeah, hello, I'm your friendly neighborhood technician. Now, today, um, got the uh, tow truck. Gonna pull Project Gramps over to the shop um, because of some uh, much appreciated information that um, uh, GSXR on Ben's World was kind enough to share that the pan, the, oil, the upper oil pan that I put on the uh, engine is not gonna work in a 124. Uh, which is my fault anyways because I accidentally ordered the engine for a uh, 140 not a 124 so gonna get to the shop I'm gonna pull the engine out of this first pull the oil pan off that one and swap it over instead of uh, waiting for an entire new pan to show up uh, at, uh, at my house so um, gonna do that first and then continue to put the engine back together so stay tuned so here we are got it in the shop now uh, I did take a quick look at this thing before I uh, started uh, uh, shooting right now, and this is the first time I've actually had it in the air. When I bought it, I didn't even put it in the air, I didn't bring it to the shop, anything like that, because they had a blown head gasket, so I didn't push it, I didn't do anything, I was just, I saw the condition of the inside, uh, the car, the, and the exterior, and I was like, hey, I'll give you some money for it, uh, and since the engine is stupid expensive for us to replace, so I was, I bought it, and uh, it was the first time I had it in the air, and let me show you what I found so far. And I already took the under panel off right here. You can see it on the ground right there. There's a little bit of a little bit of leak on it, but the crazy thing is anybody who's ever worked on a Mercedes, anybody who's ever worked on a Mercedes this old knows that these things tend to leak. And this thing has got to be the oldest and driest Mercedes I've ever seen. The and, and until I took the under panel off, I didn't even see any leaks because the bottom of that under panel is dry. But there's a little bit coming from you can see right here, maybe from the valve cover, maybe from a uh, reservoir up there, something like that, but you got a little bit of leakage around here. Everything else though is bone dry. This thing is 100% bone stock and everything is here. The ducting for the motor mounts is here. You can see right there, nothing has been ever been touched on this car. The exhaust is, I mean, there's a little bit of a dent right there, but the exhaust looks like almost like it's been replaced before. It's crazy. Everything, there's no leaks from the transmission. Everything is dry. There's no leaks from the pan, which is crazy because these things uh, leak pretty well. The gaskets after they've been uh, there for a while. It's going to need mounts. You can see up there. It's kind of sitting on itself. So uh, when I get the engine out, when I get get ready to get the other one in, it's going to need mounts. Uh, so I, I'm not going to take the engine. I'm not replacing mounts. The power steering gearbox is freaking dry. There's barely any seepage right there. Tiny bit, but nothing. This car is blowing my mind underneath here. These don't look like they've ever been changed. The alignment bolts don't look like they've ever been, they've been ever moved. This looks like it might've been tightened at one point, but there's no ghost rings around the eccentric washer right there. Uh, and on this side, there's not either. There's a little bit, I don't know what this is, some kind of sticky stuff. Might be from the road previously. These tires from 07, so when I get, whenever I replace the tires and wheels, I'm gonna have to roast these things and do some do some pretty crazy burnies with them. The, everything up there is dry. This, the, even the flex disc for this, for the drive shaft. The paint, or the coating on there is cracking a little bit, but it's not cracking, so I may end up re reusing that. The exhaust, like I said, this thing is not rusted through. There's a little bit of surface rust, but this thing, it almost looks like it's been replaced before. It's crazy. I'll probably have to replace these hangers, you know, just because. This tailpipe section with the exhaust here, looks like it might have been replaced at one point, but the diff's not even leaking. There's a little bit of seepage right there, but nothing crazy, nothing that I would say, hey, I need to reseal it. The side, the, the, the side seals might be leaking or seeping a little bit, but it's not dripping. That's a little damp, but that's nothing crazy. That shock, that's dry. It's, shock on this side is dry. Yeah, like I said, these tires are from 2007. You can see right there, 2007. So definitely these tires are gonna need to get roasted. So still even have the VIN sticker on the, on the back there and the part sticker for uh, the anti-theft sticker for the bumper, but I want this thing a little louder. Actually, I want this thing a lot of louder, but I don't want to cut up this tail section being in good condition as it in, so, or as good a condition is that it's in, so I might, I'll probably just end up
taking the back section off and maybe having an uh, exhaust shop make me a tail section that goes to the back from here especially because I want to keep the cats on because it is California so I don't want to fail emissions stuff like that so even this O2 sensor looks like it's in all right condition but I mean I don't know until I take it out but everything is insanely clean on the underside of this thing it's I couldn't get I couldn't get over it how clean this thing is so again I want to thank oh you can see right here the steering shock is not even leaking look at that those things usually leak like it's nobody's business none of the linkage none of the boots are torn this boots not torn I don't even see anything any of that those are just the lower control arm bushings are in good condition the boot for the shot for the shock up there is pretty torn so is that one probably should be attached down there but whatever outer tie rod end boots aren't cracked or torn lower ball joint boots aren't torn at all those aren't torn you can see this one is still right in the middle this alignment bolt that one's at the top but whatever Oh, I will point out that it does need a belt. I, I probably pointed out in like my very first video, but that belt is pretty, pretty cracked. That's pretty insane there. Uh, one thing I do did find that it needs the shift rod bushing. You can see right up in, in there, right there. It's pretty gone. This on, on this side right here, also gone. So it's gonna need those shift rod bushings. But like I said, I uh, do want to thank. GSXR for pointing out that the oil pan that I had put on that other engine is not going to work on that. You, you can see right here that this oil pan is all the way towards the front. It actually sticks out past the harmonic balancer right there. Whereas this one right here, the pan stops right about here. And you can see over there that it has the, the, the sway bar right here. And that other piece might stick out too far or it might be too far back. But either way, Thank you very much, uh, GSXR, for pointing that out. It saved me a ton of work, a ton of headache, trying to stuff an engine in here that won't fit because the oil pan's incorrect. So uh, I can never thank you enough for that. So other than that, I'm going to get this thing. Uh, I'm not going to tear it, start tearing it apart right now. Uh, probably in, in the next video, I'm going to start taking, I'll take the transmission out, and I'll go over how to do that, which I've taken transmissions out before, but this is going to be my first time on this car. And I'm going to try to do my best not to break anything, especially that right there because that looks super brittle. And I'm afraid that it's just going to crumble as soon as I touch it. So uh, we'll do that next video. And thank you for watching. Remember to hit subscribe. Give me that thumbs up.